Yes, so just to demonstrate, uh, we, we had eight sensors, so this is information from sensor 1, sensor 2, sensor 3, sensor 4, sensor 5, sensor 6, sensor 7, and sensor 8. Now these are the X positions of the sensors, and the Y position of the sensors, and the Z position of the sensor. And the way this code, I wrote the code, is that it can pick from row 1 to row uh, the last row determined by the number of sensors and it doesn't matter if the number of sensors are 12 or 20 of course when there are more then it will take a little longer to calculate but uh, the, this is the principle so you can arrange your data like this once you know sensor 1, 2, 3, 4 up to the nth sensor then the information from the sensor you just arrange from row 1 to the number of, of sensors and then after that you put your x values and y values and z values like this. So, and then if people who are familiar with this kind of work is these signals can run into millions of data. So, this is why I try to make this software a little bit automatic. So, once you arrange your data like this, so this is for the first signal, the second signal, the third signal, the fourth signal, the fifth signal, sixth signal, and so on, up to the number you want. So, once you arrange like this, the code is able to pick for itself and then calculate and return uh, 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 the, the output. So, for example, this is the input file from Excel. And if you want the output, this is the text file. So, this is for the first point. This is for the first signal. So, the first signal, this is the X position, the Y position, the Z position. And this is the time of occurrence. I told you we, did, we, we have four unknowns. So, so this is uh, uh, the so for the second signal you can see second signal third signal and so on and so forth so this is an automatic system that can uh, uh, automatically pick the output once you arrange them as shown in excel then it, co it computes and then is able to return uh, your solutions but it is your knowledge of the problem like i said will tell you whether the solutions are reasonable or not so for this uh, it is reasonable to judge that because for our knowledge of the problem uh, we it is reasonable to judge that these solutions are likely uh, correct so just to explain the code a little bit um, you enter the number of data points this is the number of events and then once you enter the number of events because the, you also enter the number of uh, sorry the number of sensors so if you have 20 if you have 10 in this case we have 8 because this determines the the uh the uh the uh, okay this determines some things ahead I'll, I'll try to explain so and then the number of sensors cannot be less than one uh, of course ideally the number of sensors cannot be less than the number of nodes so maybe less not less than four but this is just a, a prompt to check to check so that if you put something wrong, then uh, you are, this, the software can notify you. Then from one to to the number of, of of events. So if you have a million, if you have, then the number of sensors cannot change. So if you the experiment use the number of sensors, you put it once and you input it once and it's okay. So this is the prompt. Uh, this prompt is just to guide the user. However, once you tell it to run, it will run. Uh, uh, it will run um, systematically without uh, uh, needing you to put input uh, uh, other things. So just to guide the user. So this is a prompt to because the this array depends on the number of sensors. So you just put an empty array. And you have to give it a condition to stop. Uh, uh, maybe uh, so. So to stop it because this array depends on the number of sensors. So you must specify. So this is how to specify. Uh, so once it, this it imports this uh, data from this location, then you tell it, okay, this this array pick from the first maybe if i is one in case i is one it picks from one to n or s so i will range from one two three so like 
So if i is 1, if i is 1, pick from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If i is 2, pick from 1, 2, 3, 4. If i is 3, and so on and so forth. So that's, that's, and it does it very well. So, and so, and then, uh, so that's for the number of events. And then some conditions for it to stop and to check. If you don't put anything, of course, it will show, give you an error. Uh, just to explain a little. And then also import x. So to import the x position, just some condition to make sure it's picking the right thing. And uh, some error message also. So there's the x, the y, and then there's the z. And, uh, and uh, some conditions. So... Uh, this can be obtained from the experiment, so I'll not bother you with the details. And uh, this is just the mathematical formulation. And in my case, I have used um, simulated and healing, if you remember in the, in the introduction. So simulated and healing seems to give me very good results, so I'm happy. And this is the starting point. So I, like I told you, we expect the the solution to start, I mean the correct solution to be at maybe around 00, zero so you can see I'm suggesting to the software 00, zero and then the timings are usually very small so I suggest uh, some small value uh, and uh, typically if you even if you suggest values 10 times larger than the than the uh, values you expect then you should uh, typically uh, uh, give you reasonable solutions and then uh, the, this is a bounded problem so my object is 70 by 70 by 40 millimeters so some some boundary conditions and the boundary about time I just decided to choose some values although these are very high but still you can see the software gives me uh, quite reasonable values because the, these are usually in just few milliseconds you can see the values here are quite reasonable so even if you choose a large value uh, the software will give you the algorithm uh, kind of will give you a good uh, good solution and then uh, this is to ask it to open a file and then now append so that you're able to open your file and draw the graph if you want so just uh, write y x y z so this is the instruction to help it write this file uh, shown here uh, but th because this is already 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 run maybe let me show you a little uh, that it, when it runs on its own so let me just try to, to show you a little mm. Yeah, so we run just to demonstrate uh, because okay maybe I don't know how long it's gonna take but uh, that, uh, th this case just run 200 points and then let's see how fast so then and then there you go so you, from there it will run you can see it picking iterating and then giving the values you can see that please Pay attention to here, it's running. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, iterating and running, iterating and giving you your solutions and writing them. It's writing them already in the file, so the file I've already shown you. And yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, so you can see for yourself. So this is a, a, an automatic algorithm that can help you locate a, a position of sensors if you're interested. And this is good for maybe if you're doing research about a damage or about a breakage. But in our case, for civil engineering purposes, when we are doing a direct a shear test on... Um, brittle materials like rock or concrete and so on and so forth so thank you very much guys i hope to see you thank you for your support please like share subscribe and i see you for my next big uh, video goodbye